My name is Lainey Triplett, and I covered accounting fraud in larger corporations. Put simply, fraud is intentional deception or misrepresentation and must benefit an individual or an entity. Mistakes are not considered fraud. It must be intentional. Those who commit fraud are only thinking about the money going into their pockets. The four biggest accounting firms have the nickname the Big Four. The Big Four include Ernest & Young, Deloitte, PricewaterhouseCoopers, and KPMG. These firms have the highest quality accountants and are well res respected in the business world. They are respected because of their low fraudul fraudulent frequency and their quality of work. What do accounting firms do? All types of accounting firms make sure that businesses' financials are on track with SEC and GAAP standards. The SEC stands for Security and Exchange Commission, and GAAP is the Generally Accepted Accounting Principles. The goals of these groups is to reduce the amount of fraud that occurs in any business or corporation. Fraud in large corporations that result in billion dollar scandals often make the news because the loss to investors is so large. Some famous scandals include the Enron scandal and the WorldCom scandal. As we all know from the ethics assignment, the Enron scandal is very famous with a loss of $74 billion to investors. The WorldCom scandal had a larger loss of $180 billion to investors. The WorldCom scandal also occurred in 2002 and involved inflating revenues and capitalizing expenses. I chose to take a look at the Sarbanes-Oxley Act. This is one of the most well-known and important acts in accounting, but was still foreign to me, so I decided to take a look. The Sarbanes-Oxley Act of 2002, or SOX as it is commonly called, was formed to regulate businesses' financials and regulate how the financials were reported. This act also holds the corporate officers of a company more liable gives them more responsibility. SOX has many statutes and rules, but the most prominent few require the signing officers to review the report so they can be held liable for what they are signing. Another requires that no information be untrue, and another established the PCAOB, or the Public Company Accounting Oversight Board. The PCAOB make sure auditing professionals are adhering to the standards in the Sarbanes-Oxley Act. The SOX contains many provisions that give protection to whistleblowers. The National Whistleblower Center says it may be the most important whistleblower laws of all time. In class, we learned how whistleblowing laws protect and remedy from job loss. This law is slightly different Independent audit committees must be formed so that the employee can make complaints while keeping their confidentiality. Attorneys are required to file whistleblower complaints on their clients under multiple circumstances. Now it is allowed for those who reta retaliated against whistleblowers to be tried criminally. Finally, the whistleblower provision of SOX gives jurisdiction to the SEC to enforce all of the provisions in the Sarbanes-Oxley Act. While all these provisions from the Act sound well-intentioned, have they been effective? We are going to take a look at a couple of cases. Free Enterprise Fund versus the PCAOB and the SEC versus Goldstone. Free Enterprise Fund is a nonprofit organization. Free Enterprise's accounting firm was given a critical report and the PCAOB opened an investigation of the firm. Basically, the plaintiffs thought that the PCAOB had too much power over them. They were concerned over the separation of powers and how the board members are chosen. Courts decided that the Sarbanes-Oxley Act's limitations 
on the removal of members does not comply with the Constitution's separation of powers. SEC versus Goldstone The SEC claims that the officers of a mortgage company had deceived its financial situation to auditors in the Form 10-K. The courts found no misrepresentation in the company's financials and the SEC had failed to state claim for scheme liability of the CEO and CFO of the company. On the outside, SOX seems like a good idea. Who doesn't want to reduce misrepresentation, save stockholders' money, or hold the brains behind the fraud liable for their actions? But is it really as effective as intended? I was surprised to see just how many flaws came along with the Sarbanes-Oxley Act. Kristen Ken Kennedy highlights a few of the Act's flaws and complications. Rotating audit partners every five years creates a larger burden of being retrained all over again with a new partner. Company, a company also has to pay a lot more money to comply with SOX and auditing fees and other costs to comply. Kennedy states that costs increased about 103% in the larger corporations after SOX was enacted in 2002. The main concern with SOX is whether or not the costs are worth it. Many companies do not feel they are getting their money's worth. The larger corporations and companies have to pay millions of dollars in order to comply with all of the standards and provisions of the Sarbanes-Oxley Act. Are the extra costs really getting the work done? Looking at scholars' views and opinions, I concluded that no, the Sarbanes-Oxley Act of 2002 is not effective. Scholars really focus on how costly it is for corporations to be up to their standards. Looking at their reasons, I agree. When a corporation has to pay over $20 million or more every year just to be qualified, says how the act is hurting more than helping. Even though this was meant to help stockholders, it has also reduced the wealth of stockholders by about a trillion dollars. This is an absurd way of helping out anyone besides government collections. Overall, I now believe that the Sarbanes-Oxley Act was an overreaction to the Enron and WorldCom scandals. It has a great purpose, but is much too costly to receive all the intended benefits. I do, however, believe that misrepresentations would be greater in larger companies if the act did not exist. It is impossible to find fraud. It is impossible to stop fraud completely, but reducing it is beneficial to everyone involved. Thank you.